Hi, this is Anvesha Mukherjee. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about requirements for non-European students coming to Ireland. So there are a few things to be taken care of once you land on the soil of Ireland. Probably most of you have got your visa already, or if you're still waiting for your visa, let me tell you, once you arrive in Ireland, it's going to be valid for just another three months. And you can use those three months to, to get your appointment for the GNIB. Now, what is this GNIB? This is the visa that is applicable on this land. So, uh, to book for the appointment is a quite a difficult task. Uh, usually, there are slots open from 10.30 to 2.30. And let me tell you, it's pretty difficult to get it, even within that time. That's because there are outside agencies who keep booking it through bots, and um, that makes it difficult for people like us to book it. So basically, they want you to pay to book it for, for you. But let me tell you, you can do it just by going onto their website and do it for free. So that's for the GNIB. And even if you get the GNIB, it's not equal to a re-entry visa. So the GNIB is just like getting a visa that keeps, val that keeps you validated staying here for another year. But you need the re-entry visa just in case you leave Ireland and decide to come back again. To apply for the re-entry visa, you can do it only after you have got your GNIB card already and uh, you can apply for one time, which is for 60 euro, and you can uh, apply for multiple entry, which is for 100 euro. You can also apply for an emergency re-entry visa just in case you, you need to go and this works faster than a, an ordinary re-entry visa, but then you can do it only once in three years. Second. You need PPSN, which is the card that you need in order to get a job here. But before you have your PPS number, you need to have accommodation because they need address proof in order to give you the PPS. It arrives you within a couple of days or maximum five working days. And once you have this PPS number, only then you can register your job or even apply for a job, even if it's a part-time job because people always ask you for your PPS number and you don't get your salary unless you have that number. That being said, next comes student leap card, which is a transport card. Now, if you're a student in Ireland, we have a great news for you. You get discount on any kind of public transport that you avail. There is a kind of student leap card where anywhere you go is like five uh, euro per day, which can be much more if you are Go if you're using a normal leap card. So where can you get that? If you're coming to Dublin, you can go for it uh, in Trinity College. In Trinity College, you can just apply for it. You can show them your student card and you'll get it the same day and it costs just 10 euro. Next is having a bank account. Now, of course, if you are a student here uh, and you need money and you do need to have a bank account, also if you're applying for a job here. So the best banks that are most student friendly and that are targeted to students are AIB Bank and Bank of Ireland. Uh, so speaking about the banking section, I think that as a student, you can just go to your college, you can ask for a letter from your college because they, they want to see that letter. And once you get that letter, you can apply for a current account in AIB or Bank of Ireland and uh, it's pretty easy actually but there is nothing much about it. Now coming to the most difficult part of your journey through Ireland this is probably the biggest problem that you will face coming to Ireland that is the problem of accommodation. Now as you know already by the law of economics when there is a high demand and low supply the prices go up and the same thing has happened in Ireland. There is an inflation here at the moment and the price of everything, starting from accommodation to food to even education, everything has gone up. So, to get a room for yourself could be as much as 600 to 650 a month. That is excluding bills. For most houses, now there is a lot of scam going on all over Ireland regarding this accommodation as you can understand that there are so few houses and there is such a high demand for this that um, there are lots of scams around it so before you give your money you should meet the person 
You should talk to other people living in the house. You should see the house yourself, sign an agreement with the person, and only then give your money. Otherwise, rest assured it's a scam. So, that being said, uh, it's always better to choose city center location because you have to travel less. And remember, Ireland is famous for its nighttime parties. Ireland, especially Dublin, comes alive at night. So, if you're a party person and you want to hang out sometime, especially on the weekends, the last bus leaves the city center at 11.30, which means you can't make it home. So it's better to have a city center home if you are more of a party person than a stay-at-home person. Coming to emergency help. Uh, this is mostly financial help. So if you are an Indian coming to Ireland, like myself, uh, you can carry a particular card that is a multiple currency card. Uh, it, it, these are prepaid visa cards and they can be used across currencies and as far as I know uh, HDFC and Access Bank uh, have the service and you can get a card from them now suppose something goes wrong suppose you run out of money you can call your parents back or your friends back at home and they can deposit money on this particular account from India from your home and it will arrive you in your currency that is euro in Ireland. Now, uh, another important point, phone. Leica and Tesco mobile are the cheapest because you can top them up at as cheap as 15 euro per month and get internet. Uh, Leica mobile also gives you the ability to call your people back in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and most Asian and African and Northeastern countries. Apart from that, you can go for Vodafone or 3Mobile uh, and they're a bit expensive, but they're uh, valid all over Europe. Now, there are several apps that you might download and they will be helpful in due course of time. For example, the Dublin Bus app. The Dublin Bus app helps you see the bus stop that is closest to you and when your bus is coming. In Ireland, just like most countries of the world, uh, different buses have different numbers and different numbers have different routes. So if your bus, suppose you take bus 39 and you know your the, every bus stop has a number again and you can just go onto this app, see when your bus is coming and plan your schedule, your departure accordingly. Uh, next one is Eventbrite. Uh, Dublin is a party is a party city. Ireland is a party country. So, um, if you want to go for a concert, event, anything, you can book your ticket on Eventbrite. And then there is Transferwise. If you have relatives in India, anywhere abroad, even America, uh, you can send money through Transferwise, and they charge very very less for the transaction, even intercurrency transactions. And then there is Apple Pay or Google Pay, whichever, depending on your phone. And almost all the shops across Dublin take Apple Pay or Google Pay. And you can just tap your phone against the card reader and it would be the same as tapping your card against it. So these are the few apps that you might consider uh, keeping with you on your phone. So if you think this information has been helpful to you, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and um, comment, like and share with your friends. If you're already in Ireland or if you're planning to come to Ireland, I hope this will be useful to you. Thank you for watching. Bye.